getting what you can versus getting what you want. This is an important one because getting what you can is about getting the things that are presented to you. Someone offering to you, hey, we'll give you this. As a matter of fact, in my email inbox here, I am CC'd on a message from a guy who was running a, an event. Not going to say which event, but this event is, I will say it's happening in early 2025. And this guy is trying to get me to come and speak at the event. Challenge with his event is they do not have a budget to pay speakers. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I would say no, at least as of today. It doesn't necessarily mean I would say no to it. I might accept this event if they can take care of other arrangements, such as we need to make sure we get some uh, some testimonial feedback, we need to get access to all the attendees, like their contact information of all the attendees. They need to cover my travel and they need to cover my hotel. And if they can cover all that stuff, then I might do the event, even though they cannot pay my fee for actually speaking. So getting what you can is about what this guy happens to be proposing right now. Again, looking at his email, he's telling me what they can do. That's literally what he's telling me what they can do. We can offer this and we can spend this much to cover Dre's airfare and hotel. The problem is the amount they are offering to spend to cover my airfare and hotel is not enough to cover the airfare and hotel. And <clears throat> that's an issue because if we can't come to a conclusion on that, then this event ain't happening. That's about getting what you can get. And there is a time, there was a time in my career where I would do this event anyway because I was not that known and didn't have that much experience. And I would take whatever I could get simply because I needed the experience and the experience was worth financially investing in. At this point, however, it is not worth financially investing in. So uh, TBD, this is to be determined what ends up happening with this event, but we're going to know by the time, yeah, by the time you all hear this episode, it will already have been decided, even though the event did not happen yet. So getting what you can is about things that are presented to you, offered to you, maybe even pursuing you, but maybe you're simply not interested in it. Ladies who are listening to this, have you ever had a man who was pursuing you, interested, wanted your attention, but you simply did not want to give it back? <laughs> All right. Has any of you ever had that happen? I'm sure many of you have that happen and you got to develop defense mechanisms to keep the guys you're not interested in away from you. So you may have found yourself in situations in life in which you accepted some things that you didn't really want because maybe you just didn't feel like you had any better options. And depending on, depending on your level of ambition, you maybe even resented the fact that you had accepted something because you didn't get the thing that you actually wanted. And maybe if you don't have a high level of ambition, then maybe this whole frame doesn't even apply to you because you haven't even thought about what you want. You just take whatever is handed to you and you take what you can get. I'm going to assume most of you are not that. I'm going to assume most of you are in the group of getting what you actually want. And that is about getting things exactly as you would like them to be, regardless of what's being offered to you. So if someone comes to you and offers you, hey, I will give you $1, and you say, no, I want $10, or I'm not interested at all, that's getting what you want. Getting what you can is someone coming and offering you $1, and you say, oh, $1, okay, oh, great, great, what I got to do? All right, that's getting what you can. And I'm assuming, again, most of you have at least a vague idea, hopefully a more, more than vague, but a clear idea of what you want so that you can actually put yourself in alignment with possibly getting it. Because you don't know what you want, then it's impossible for you to get it. So that's what we're going to talk about here today. And regardless of what's being offered to you or what you see in front of you at the moment, you know what it is you want. So even though you want $10, but you have five offers right now, all offering you somewhere between $1 and $3, you still keep your eyes on the prize of I want $10, even though nobody's offering me $10 right now. The good thing is there's something you can do about that. So today, we're going to talk about how to get the things you want rather than having to settle for the things that you can get. All right. Is that something you'd be interested in? Great. Point number one. Topic once again today is how to getting what you want versus getting what you can. And point number one, decide on what you want. All right. So this one I just stepped on an introduction. What do you want? Here is the only starting point for this process. To go through this process, this is this is an absolute must of where you must, you must begin at this point. What do you want? If you don't know, you cannot get it. You need to know what you want so you know what you'd be going after and also so you know what you do not want. The biggest challenge most people have with getting what they want is that they haven't gotten clear on what it is. Therefore, when it comes by, they don't even know. They don't notice that that's, hey, that's the thing that you want. Well, you don't know because you haven't gotten clear on what you want. Well, here's something being offered to you. Is this what you want? Well, you don't know because you're not clear on what you want. So maybe you should just accept this. Maybe not. Maybe accept that. You don't know because you're not clear. A lack of clarity is one of the hardest parts of 
enacting what I'm talking about here today. You can't get what you want unless you are clear on what it is. So therefore, again, it's impossible to get something if you're not aware of it and you haven't gotten clear on it. So where do you want to go? How much money do you want to make? Uh, what do you want your career, your family, or your life to look like? What do you want to achieve? Uh, how will you measure your outcomes? How will you know that you've actually, actually achieved it? How would you know if you're in the process, if you're halfway there, three quarters of the way there, or only 10% of the way there? How would you know? Where may you need to uh, relocate, adjust, or make some other change so that you can be more aligned with your stated desires? These are all questions that should be asked along the lines of figuring out what you want. So once you start to get it, even a vague idea, a rough idea of what you want, you got to start asking clarifying questions so you can get more specific. And the more specific you are, specificity helps clarity. And clarity leads to decisiveness. Decisiveness leads to action. Actions to performance. Performance to results. So this is why that clarity matters so much. These are all things you should be asking when you're figuring out what you want. I find the biggest challenge most people have is just being unclear on their outcomes. And without clarity, it's very difficult to take action. So anytime you find yourself unable to decide on and consummate action, it's probably because you're unclear on the desired outcome. So it's not easy to decide which direction to go in. You got four different ways you can go. You're not sure which one to take and which ones to cut off because your outcome is not clear. And that leaves us stuck in what they call paralysis by analysis. So the first step here is always, always, always getting clarity. And the way you get clarity, folks, is not by making statements, but by asking questions and answering those questions. The more questions you ask yourself, the more clear you're going to get on what is a yes and also what is a no. And I help people with this in less than an hour in one conversation with me inside of Work On Your Game University. So if you have not yet joined the university, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Point number two, today's topic, once again, is getting what you can versus getting what you want. Number two, stop accepting what you do not want. So this requires you, first of all, to know what you do not want. Speaking of what we said in the first point, here's a good way to begin. If you're having a hard time getting clear on what you do want, just flip the question around and ask yourself what you don't want. What do you hate? What do you despise? What do you consider to be absolutely unacceptable? And you can even look into your own history and your own situations to find this. When, what points in life or at what points in your career or in that specific, particular space in your life? So let's say it's a relationship. What relationships were you in where things were absolutely unacceptable and that can never happen again? What job did you have when things were just terrible and you can never be in a job like that again? Uh, where did you travel and the flight was just terrible and the hotel sucked and the food was horrible? What places would you never go again? What airlines would you never fly on again? What hotel would you never stay at again? Usually you can answer one of these questions. If you can't answer the question about what you do want, you can answer the question about what you don't want. Usually I find that no one's drawing a complete blank on both ends of the spectrum. And people at a higher percentage actually in pointing out what they don't want than pointing out what they do want. Because in the human brain, we're just wired to remember things that trigger us in a negative way. We tend to hold on to those much more strongly than we hold on to the positive outcomes. For whatever reason, it's generally human nature, but they're usually very easy to recall all right, the things that we don't want. So if you can't get clear on what you do want, just ask what you don't want in the same aspect of your life. So often these can be the things that currently exist in your circumstance or environment, maybe things that you would like to change or things that uh, it could be the same and or things that you wish had never existed in the first place. Maybe, again, it could be a job or a boss that you hate. Maybe there are friends or family members around you who you really don't want them to be around you or you don't want to be around them. Maybe it's, again, I just gave you an example. This guy is saying to me, well, we can't pay you to speak, but we can cover your travel and lodging. But now they're putting a limit on how much they can spend on travel and lodging. And this probably is not going to happen. It's not necessarily that I hate it, but I know I don't want it. So I can just put this under the, I can put this underneath the line. Okay, moving forward, as part of my process, if someone comes to me and they want me to speak somewhere, and they don't have a budget to pay me, I could still possibly consider it. But if they can't come above this line, the answer might be no, depending on what the event is, because there are events out there where maybe I'll pay for my own travel and my own hotel, depending on who I'm going to get in front of. Maybe it makes sense. But for this event, it would not make sense. And that's why they're going to have to uh, come out of their pockets and pay for that flight. And if they don't want to do that, then, well, they won't have a problem. They just won't have Dre Baldwin. Right? That's what they're going to have. So you need to figure out what are the things that you want to change or the things that you don't like. Again, if you're not clear on the first one, what you do want. So look back in your life. For many of you, you won't have to look hard, nor will you have to look far to identify some things that you don't want. 
I would guess that everyone listening to me right now has some aspects of your life or career or both that you absolutely do not like, you are kind of disgusted with, you are fed up with, you are tired of, and if you could wave a magic wand, you would get rid of them right now. All right, so those will help you get clear on what you do want because you're clear on what you don't want. Usually what you do want is generally in the direction of looking the opposite of the situation that you despise that, that's happening right now. Maybe it's something with your personal self. It could be just something that you're doing. Right? You don't like the fact that you keep setting an alarm for five o'clock, but you're waking up at 5.30, 5.15, 5.45. Maybe, that's, maybe it's that. Maybe it's something mentally that you keep doing. You have a bad habit of second guessing yourself and beating yourself down as soon as you come up with an idea. Maybe, maybe it's physically, you are going to the gym, but you keep finding yourself in the middle of your workout session, quote unquote workout session, sitting on equipment and scrolling through social media on your phone. And you know you're not supposed to be doing that, but you keep doing it. All right, so the opposite of that would be the opposite of that. All right, so what is the thing that you don't want to be doing that, but you know is already existing? Maybe it's something that you're not proud of and you know you want it to be different. Maybe it's a situation that was just thrown in your lap and you didn't have the power to make it happen, nor did you have the power to reject it. Maybe you don't like the fact that you're in such and such neighborhood, but that's where you grew up and that's where all the people you've known all your life are, but you know you don't want to be there anymore. And it wasn't your fault you got thrown in there, but you know you want to get the hell out of there. All right, so again, whatever this is, Flip around the equation and just ask yourself, all right, what's the opposite of this? And you can do that with the positive. You can do it with the negative. It'll give you more clarity. In my experience, many, most human beings actually can come up with plenty of answers on the negative side of an equation just because, again, it's just human nature. So if one is not working, try the other one. What are the things you hate? Who are the people you hate? What are you accepting that you don't want to accept anymore? What are some common annoyances that you keep dealing with that if you could, you would get rid of them immediately? What are those? If you had, if a Aladdin popped out of a genie and said, I will grant you three wishes of eliminating things that you hate. Just tell me what those three things are. What are the first three things you would say? Uh, you only get to eliminate three. What would they be? Everyone can answer these questions. Again, when it comes to positive, it's harder. When it comes to the negative, it's usually pretty easy. Because when it comes to the positive, there may be a lot of positive things we want. When it comes to the negative, we usually can be very precise in the things that we hate. Moving on to point number three. Today's topic, once again, is getting what you can versus getting what you want. Number three, standard adjustments, which require change and elimination. So when I say standard adjustments, what I mean is adjusting your standards. I don't mean adjustments that are routine and habitual. I mean adjust, adjusting your personal standards or your professional standards, but standards when it comes to you as an individual. So I talked about standards I'm not here. I talked about episode 2668. What standards are you willing to set? Episode number 2097. Standards still matter. Episode 1974. Standards, the enemy of mediocrity. Episode 1331. Never lower the bar of standards. Once you have answered the first two questions and you have some clarity on what you want and don't want, now comes the part about actually making this real. Because right, the first two parts are just about getting clarity. So now that you're clear on what you want, life to look like. Now it comes time to actually do stuff that'll make it look that way. How do you do that? Well, here's the part. In order for things to change, you understand that you got to change. Right? Everyone understands the general idea of that, that. If things are going to change, we must change. And that means adjusting our standards, which simply means what are we going to change about what is acceptable versus what is not? Because right now, if it's acceptable for you to be sitting on the equipment for 15 minutes in the gym, you're sitting on the bench press, but you're not actually bench pressing because you're reading on your phone. See, if you change the standard to that being completely unacceptable, then that means the action that follows will be you not doing that when you're supposed to be lifting weights anymore. I don't know what else you can do in your break in between sets, but I ain't going to be looking at your phone. Maybe you can put your phone in the locker room or keep it in the car so you don't even get tempted to look at it in the first place. So we have to make some adjustments. What is no longer acceptable and what is absolutely mandatory nowadays? And this is why absolutes matter so much. This is why I did a whole episode on why we need absolutes rather than maybes. That was episode number 2349. So if you give yourself an absolute, a standard is a form of an absolute. It's a better way of saying it. When I set a standard and say, I absolutely must be up and out of bed no later than 5 a.m. every single day, that is a standard. And that standard is also an absolute, which means if I get out of bed at 5.01, then I am not living up to my own standard and that's not acceptable. If I get out of bed at 5.15, that's unacceptable. 
I get about at four o'clock, that's acceptable. Why? Because my standard is five o'clock, no waiter. And you see how there's no gray area in that? This is why absolutes matter so much. Because absolutes leave no room for interpretation. It's a black and white, yes or no, zero or one. It's a binary, meaning there are only two options. And when we give ourselves binaries, it makes it much easier to make decisions. And it leaves no wiggle room for maybe or what about this or no, let's give myself a pass this one time or exceptions. So you don't have room for any of that nonsense when you give yourself clear binaries. This also puts pressure on you to deliver on the binary that you set for yourself. The challenge for many of you is that you don't like putting pressure on yourself with binaries because they force your hand and they don't allow excuses. The good news is all of you know how to perform when your hand is forced and excuses are not allowed. The challenge is you have trouble holding yourself to that kind of standard. Here's the good news. You don't have to. Come into work when you're getting university. Let me be your coach. I will hold you to the standard so that you don't have to try to force feed it upon yourself, which you probably already tried and it didn't quite work. And time is going by all, all the while and you're not squeezing the most out of your potential. So let's fix that problem. Come into work when you're getting university. We'll set those standards for you very quickly, very easily, and you'll know exactly what it is so that there's no gray area. All right. Again, the biggest challenge I find with people in all different industries, all different walks of life, all different levels of accomplishment and experience is that everyone has the common issue of <coughs> excuse me, giving themselves too much gray, not enough black and white, not enough absolutes, too many maybes, too many exceptions, and this is the reason why people don't achieve. They give themselves too many out causes. Oh, well, I'll wake up at 5.30 today, and then tomorrow I'll make up for that workout that I missed today. No, bullshit. If the, the standard is 5 o'clock, then it's 5 o'clock. Not 5 o'clock when you feel like it. 5 o'clock, even if you went to bed at 12 o'clock. That's the standard. And often, a change in standards, ladies and gentlemen, is about eliminating things, not adding things. So what needs to go in order for your standards to be adjusted? So if you say, I'm going to wake up at 5 o'clock and no later than 5 every single day, and when generally you've been waking up at 6, 6.30, 5.45, what needs to change in order for you to wake up at five every day? Usually you're probably going to have to make some type of lifestyle change. So if you're normally going to bed at midnight and now you're going to wake up at five o'clock, you'd be very groggy waking up at five o'clock going to sleep at midnight. You only got five hours of sleep when you're used to six and a half. Okay, now you got to go to bed earlier. In order for you to go to bed earlier, what do you have to eliminate as far as your night routine? How much time are you spending watching TV, scrolling through Netflix, looking at your phone on social media? How much time is being wasted there? If you eliminated that, would that give you time to go to bed earlier so you can wake up at five o'clock? like the standard that you set. Standard setting is often about elimination, not addition. There are some things you have to drop rather than add. You just got to figure out what they are. The hardest eliminations, everybody, are things that we've grown comfortable with and accustomed to, but are not required for survival and continuance. The hardest eliminations are things that we are used to, we're used to doing them, but they're not necessary for us to continue. We just got so used to them that it feels like it's necessary. Feels like we have to do it, even though we don't really have to do it. And these are the ones that are hardest to drop, but often are the most important to be dropped. So we have just gotten so used to certain things that they may not even, we may not even think of them as something that could possibly be eliminated because we're like, well, no way I'm winning that. I do that all the time. So if you're no longer going to accept X, whatever X is, what will have to change about your current standards that have allowed you to accept X? What are you allowing that lets X live? What things may you have to eliminate so that X no longer makes any sense? So if you no longer tolerate Z, what type of changes have to occur in order for Z to no longer be tolerable nor acceptable? See, these questions will get you on the right track to making your adjustments to your standards. You decide that I can no longer accept making less than $10,000 a month, then what are some of the things you're going to have to give up in order for that to be true? If you decide you're never going to make less than $10,000 a month, what are some of the things you must emphasize more of in order to make sure that you live up to that standard that you are setting for yourself? And again, usually it's giving things up and eliminating things more than it is adding things. Most people default to adding things, and that's why the opportunity is in what you're willing to get rid of because that simplifies things, makes it easier to remember. And it also contributes to having more clarity, the fewer things you have to juggle. So you see how all these pieces start to connect to each other as we put them together. Let's recap today's class, which is getting what you can versus getting what you want. Again, getting what you can is about getting what's offered to you or what's interested in you, whereas getting what you want is about getting 
what you want, regardless of whether it seems to be interested in you right now or even if it's been offered to you. Point number one, decide on what you want. All right, this is the starting point for this process as applies to everyone. More clear you are on what you want, easier it is easier it will be to move forward. Point number two, stop accepting what you don't want. So if you have a hard time figuring out what you do want, ask yourself the other question, what do you not want? Usually people are pretty good at answering uh, one question if they are not good at answering the other. So what you don't want usually will uh, bring to mind all the stuff you've experienced that you absolutely hate it, that you detest it, that you would never go through again, you wouldn't want your worst enemy to go through. What are those things? The more clear you are on those, the easier it is to decide what you do want because all you got to do is flip it around and look at all the, the opposites of the things that you hated. Number three, standard adjustments, which require change and elimination. Once you've answered the first two questions, now this part about making it real is setting a new standard. New things that are accepted, new things that are no longer accepted, what will you no longer tolerate? Remember that the higher the level the person goes, the fewer things they tolerate. The higher the level the person goes, the fewer things they tolerate. All right, there are certain things that get tolerated when you are making 50 grand a year that you don't tolerate when you're making 500 grand and you definitely don't tolerate when you're making 5 million. All right, as the levels go up, your tolerance goes down. That's how it works. Why? Because your standards are higher and high standards means low tolerance. High standards equals low tolerance. All that said, folks, make sure you text. Numbers down below in the description. Also, work on your game, university.com. You want to learn how to set high standards and have low tolerance for nonsense so you can achieve your goals now rather than next week, next month, next year. Go to work on your game, university.com. Have me as your direct coach. Work on your game. Dre, all.